Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations with leaders in digital infrastructure. My name is Emily Scherer for JSA. I am joined today by Brian Riley. He is the CEO of Hexatronic. Brian, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I would love to start with some exciting news. Hexatronic just announced a new fiber factory in South Carolina. Can you tell us more about that project? Yeah, thanks for asking. It's an extremely exciting time for us. Um, you know, we've been growing rapidly in the U.S., and one of the things we hear from our customers consistently is they want to buy products that are manufactured in the U.S., a uh, big piece of the BABA compliance for the BEAD program as well. And so one of the last pieces in that strategy for us was to add fiber cable manufacturing. Everything else in our portfolio uh, is currently made in the U.S., and so we're really excited to add that last piece of the puzzle and be able to go to our customers and say we have a fully U.S.-made end-to-end solution of, of all the components. That's fantastic. And I didn't realize that that was a part of BEAD as well, that it has to be U.S. manufactured. Yeah, yeah. so a lot, of, it depends on components, but by and large, anything you want to get government subsidy money for to build yeah. with the BEAD program has to be built with American-made cable, American-made electronics, right, right. all the things to try to drive you know growth uh, within the U.S. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that uh, fiber factory. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about AI. It's reshaping how networks are built and managed, and Hexatronic is incorporating AI and next-gen technology, so I would love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, AI has been an interesting one for us because we, a lot of our customers uh, tend to support hyperscalers. Some of them are hyperscalers and, and their growth driven by the AI world has just been exponential. Um, and a lot of what they're focused on is very, very dense fiber uh, that they're trying to expand for some of the compute between nodes. And uh, what's been exciting for us is to play a piece in enabling that with them and and, you know, we offer some of the smallest fiber cables in the market, and they love that because they're trying to pack as much glass within the smallest piece, um, given that they're trying to just densify all of their operations. Yeah, excellent. Well, great. It sounds like you're going to be able to help them immensely then with the, the offerings that you have. So that's fantastic. It's, it's exciting to play a small piece in the uh, the AI uh, growth engine, yeah, I think. Yeah, everybody is these yeah, days, right? It's the big sure. topic. Great. Um, now, you're speaking tomorrow on a panel at 9.15 a.m. for our early birds who are here and want to catch <laughs> that. Um, it's about how fiber to the home operators are driving growth and efficiency. Can you give us a preview or a key takeaway that you're hoping people have from that panel? Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm focused on is, you know, the challenge you have with growing the fiber networks in the U.S. is really, you know, there's two there's two pieces of the business case. It's can you build it for the cost that everybody has their investment, you know, kind of threshold that they need to be under, and then can you gain the customers? It's hard for me to help gain customers uh, because that tends to be a marketing type uh, activity for the ISP, but, uh, you know, I think I'm excited that, you know, we offer a solution that one of the only solutions I think that allows uh, fiber builders to defer, you know, roughly a quarter to a third of their capex from the, the upfront build cost. And so that's a game changer for them. When they start to see those things, it allows them to continue the growth. Um, a lot of fiber operators tend to build, you know, business cases and then run into challenges. You know, it's difficult building fiber networks. And so to give some of that, uh, that capex reduction where they can uh, maybe have a little bit of, of investment return room. I think that's, uh, it's exciting for me uh, and really just to spread the word. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, great. Everybody, that panel is tomorrow morning at 915. So be sure to catch Brian on that. Um, and finally, Hexatronic has seen significant growth in recent years. Um, I'd love to hear what's next for the company. What are the big opportunities that you see in the year ahead? Yeah, you know, it's been a, it's been an interesting growth curve for us in the U.S. Uh, we're, you know, the way we, um, Build fiber in the U.S. is different from most of the world. Um, the way fiber is built in, in Europe and Asia and even uh, Oceania is really, it's with a hexatronic architecture. In the U.S., we're kind of a, the challenger brand, we'll say, and it's an awareness message for us to get the brand out there and get the, the why, I think, in front of people. And so I think as we continue to promote the brand, have the conversations about what we offer and how it's different from maybe what people are used to building fiber, I think that's where I see so much excitement. And with the investment that we have building products in America, we're announcing a new fiber plant in America. I think the commitment to the company uh, that ha we have to the U.S. market just supports that. And I'm excited to see 
the light bulb go off with all of our customers as they kind of get the why. Yeah, and this is the perfect show to do that. You've got everybody here and you can, you know, get that message across. So, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Wish you luck at the rest of the event and thank you for stopping by here to talk to us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. And to our viewers, stay connected and happy networking.